Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have z cubed plus 3z squared plus 3z equals i. And we're going to be solving for z values. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos on basics of complex numbers and a bunch of other problems that I made. So we have this cubic equation and we're going to solve for z. One of the things we can do is use the cubic formula, right? But to be able to use the cubic formula, we need to get rid of z squared. So we could go ahead and do the following. Replace z with w minus 1. And that should give us something nice. And you'll be surprised. Normally, when you had a cubic equation like z cubed plus bz squared plus cz plus d equals 0, suppose a is equal to 1, just to, for simplicity's sake, you would basically replace z with another variable minus this number b divided by the degree, which is 3 in this case. And to a uh, cortic, you can apply a similar scenario, uh, but that's what you would do to get rid of the quadratic term. Because then you'll have a depressed cubic, which you can solve by Cardano's formula or Ferrero's formula or Tartaglia's formula. Whoever came up with it first, you know, it's named um, usually by Cardano's formula. But anyways, so if we do this, we should end up with something that is missing the quadratic term. And then that can be easily solved using an identity, uh, which looks like this, a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. You should probably know this uh, if you have taken algebra and this is a very well-known identity. And then we're going to, for example, replace this with w and come up with a cubic equation. And then by looking at the coefficients, we will end up with a quadratic equation. Okay, so we reduce the degree. If you get a quartic, you can reduce the power, the degree, and get a cubic uh, if you have a quintic, unfortunately, you're not able to do that in except for some cases, for some special cases. In general, in general, you cannot solve a quintic. There's no quintic formula, which is very sad. But what can you do? So let's go ahead and replace z with w minus one, w minus one cubed, plus three times w minus one squared, plus three times w minus one, plus that's it. Equals i. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and simplify this as much as possible. Uh, this one expression right here is going to be w cubed minus 3w squared plus 3w minus 1. And then we're going to get 3 times w squared minus 2w. That'll be minus 6w. Plus 1 is going to be a plus 3. And then plus 3w minus 3 equals i. Let's see if we can simplify this expression, can we? First of all, uh, since our goal was to eliminate the quadratic term, it should definitely cancel out, right? So w squared should cancel out, and then, and then we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting what else? Let's see. Ooh, 3w plus 3w is 6w. That's also going to cancel out. Uh oh, 3 is also going to cancel out. Interesting. And we're going to end up with something like this. W cubed equals 1 plus i. Uh-oh. Were you expecting that? Probably. If you knew the trick, you would be expecting something like this. And then from here, we can go ahead and proceed with the cube root and so on and so forth. Since the second method that I'm about to introduce will be very similar to this, I'm going to leave it at this and then start with the second method because it's going to be the same idea and we don't really need to go through the uh, same thing twice. Okay, so here's my second method. As soon as you saw a problem like this, you should immediately remember one thing, the binomial theorem. What does the binomial theorem say? It just says if you have a plus b cubed, it's a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And if b is equal to 1, then you get a plus 1 cubed, which is a cubed plus 3a squared plus 3a plus 1. Uh-oh, 
that kind of looks like our expression, except we don't have the plus one at the end, but we have an I on the other side. But notice that this part is familiar, right? So basically what we need to do is then complete the cube. You probably know the expression complete the square, which is a method we use for solving quadratic equation that can also be used as a proof of the uh, Pitha, I was going to say Pythagorean, but that wasn't the right word. Um, I mean the quadratic formula. To prove the quadratic formula, you can definitely use completing the square. In this case, we are completing the cube. How? Like this. We have z cubed plus 3z squared plus 3z. And then, of course, this is equal to i. And we are adding 1 to both sides. Why? Because that completes the cube, not squared, right? And that gives us z plus 1 to the third on the left-hand side and 1 plus i on the right-hand side. So what are we supposed to do? Well, we know that the cube of a complex number is 1 plus i. What is that supposed to mean? There are actually three numbers whose cube is 1 plus i. Those are called the cube roots of 1 plus i. I say the cube roots because a complex number has three cube roots. Even one has three cube roots. But zero has only one because zero is just exception, right? So let's see how we can go ahead and find the cube roots of this number. Of course, that's not going to give us z because we still have to subtract, but we can take care of that. So in order to be able to do this, I would like to first write my expression as follows, like raise both sides to the power one third. And this just indicates a general uh, notation for cube roots of one plus i. So that basically has multi is multi-valued. There are three values for this. Okay, cool. Now, how do you find the cube root of this number? Easy. You can write in polar form or you can set the cube root equal to 1 and then you can kind of cube root both sides. Like you can say, okay, suppose 1 plus i, the cube root of that is a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, by the way. And then you can cube both sides and then compare the coefficients. But trust me, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And that's going to be quite complicated. You're going to get a homogeneous system, I think, but it's not worth it. Let's take a shortcut because you're supposed to be lazy, remember? That's our motto. So, how do you find cube roots? We're going to write this in polar form. Uh, the modulus r or absolute value is root 2, and the theta would be pi over 4 because notice that it's 1, 1, so it's the 45 degree, 45, 45 triangle. Got it? All right, so now z plus 1 is 1 plus i, which can be written as root 2 times e to the power i pi over 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and raise it to the power 1 third. You know what that entails? It basically entails uh, raising both everything to the power 1 third, which, is gonna, uh, which means you're going to cut the angle in thirds. So it's going to be like e to the power i times pi over 12. And then root 2 is just going to be, because normally it's 2 to the power 1 half, but it's just going to be 2 to the power 1 6, which is the 6 root of 2. So you're going to get something like this, but of course it's only one of the values. And the other ones, you can take this argument, that's the principle, and then just keep adding 2 pi over 3, because cube roots are going to be separated by that angle. And then of course the next one you're going to add is going to be 4 pi over 3, and this would give you the other angles uh, for the other solutions. Or you can take the one of the solutions and multiply by omega, which is one of the cube roots of 1, but that's probably harder. I don't know. But let's go ahead and focus on one of these because the others are so similar, and I'm also going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. But if you think about uh, this, this is basically cosine of pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. Pi over 12 is 15 degrees, so how do you find the values of sine and cosine? Think about it this way. This is 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees, so that's a 30-60 triangle. And suppose this is equal to 1, root 3, and 2. Just extend the base, 2 units, and that's going to give you another triangle if you connect them. And this triangle is isosceles, so the base angles are congruent, but their sum from exterior angle theorem is 30 degrees, so half of that will be 15 degrees. From here you can basically get the sine and cosine values, but you need to find the 
hypotenuse, so on and so forth. Too much work. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you because I'm about to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. Or should I say some of the results or the whole thing, right? Here we go. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.